odd, isn't it? Because the 996 is a modern classic now. It's a car that's not overrun by driver aids. But we do still need to stay in touch with the modern world, don't we? Now, the eagle-eyed among you may have seen previously that this car came with PCM, Porsche Communication Management. This is PCM1, and it was the first time Porsche had PCM in any 911. It's the first time, obviously, the 911 came with a digital screen that had maps on it. Now, obviously, technology has moved on rather significantly since 1998. And to be honest with you, every single feature other than the radio is utterly redundant. I don't use it for anything. The maps are old. It's an absolute dog to use. So I just use it for the radio and nothing else. So despite all of PCM1's features, I've obviously still just been putting my own smartphone on my phone holder and using it that way. However, a couple of months ago, Porsche Classic released a new product that really piqued my interest, probably a lot of 996 owners too. PCCM, Porsche Classic Communication Management. This, to my mind, is absolutely genius. The short of it is, latest PCM in your Classic. Previously, you could only get it on air cool cars with a single DIN unit going in the dashboard. Now what you get is PCCM Plus, which is essentially a double DIN unit that slots into the 996's revised dashboard, obviously over the air cool cars before it, and brings that modern technology into the 996. That, to my mind, is an absolutely stellar product. I've wanted one for a while. I've only just managed to get my hands on it, and I'm going to go to Porsche Centre Bournemouth now to get this ageing PCM1 relic out and get new PCCM Plus in. I took my 996 to Porsche Bournemouth because not only are they my local dealer, they're also super experienced with classic 911s, with many of the technicians having been there when the air-cooled cars were new. The PCM swap was a full morning's work and involved taking out the entire centre section of the 996's dashboard before PCCM Plus was unboxed and placed next to its PCM1 grandfather. I was pleased to see at this point that not only is the new unit more sophisticated, it's also lighter and would make a stellar addition to my daily driven 996. Installation complete, it was time to get on the road and get to grips with the digital future in my timeless classic. Okay, so as you can tell by the new attire, not to mention the new barnet, that a few days have elapsed now since the PCCM Plus was fitted into the dashboard here inside Little Irish. I wanted to give a couple of days to basically try the system out, get the full functionality of it through my head and understand the positives and if there's any drawbacks of it in order to complete a proper diligent review. So before we turn it on, let's take a look at the PCM at home in the dashboard. Have to say, first impressions, really 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 satisfied with how this looks it looks like it has been in this car from day one obviously the porsche script at the top always helps matters doesn't it but then also what i really like is this key attention to detail mainly with these two here rotary knobs they're exactly the same as those found on the pcm2 system which was on the 996.2 so Again, all about bringing this modern technology and infotainment into this kind of classic and original structure of the 996. So that's a big win. In terms of how they feel as well, there's a nice weight to them. Um, they're quite grippy to touch. Again, exactly the same as the 996 Gen 2. But again, turning them, there's a nice weight to them. They don't feel cheap. So good to look at good to turn as well. In between those two rotary knobs you have got six buttons, home tuner, media, phone, nav and back. Now in terms of like the script and the writing on there, they are absolutely aching to the 991 PCM unit. So again I kind of like that blend of 996 general look and feel but actually bringing in some of that modernity and as I know through notable press car loans over the years, it's exactly the same as the 991 system. Again, to push and prod, they feel great. Nice weighting to them, they don't feel cheap. So overall in terms of visuals and ergonomics, all good so far. In terms of hardware, obviously you've got this main double DIN unit here with a seven inch high definition touch screen. Then below that, I have actually had a new cubby hole put in. Now that's because I had the early PCM1, which had the CD navigation uh, module down below there. 
there is a weight saving now between the old and the new unit even just picking up like the, the old double din unit next to this PCCM plus double din unit there's a definite weight saving although I've not measured to be precise but then again there's a further weight saving because the nav module that used to be in my case and lower center console here is superfluous it's not needed anymore so it's come out there's a, a cubby hole has been put in that is um, in addition to the cost of the PCCM plus but it is a minimal cost and it is in here where the phone connectivity the aux in and another USB port is all housed now I've seen some that when you look at the PCM some people have mounted that centrally I mean whilst I think that looks great in terms of being like perfectly symmetrical it is to the detriment of a little bit of practicality I've put it to the left which simply means on the right hand side that's where I can put my phone. <laughs> you get in the car, plug your phone in, pop it in the cubby hole, and you forget about it until you get out of the car. Perfect, and yet I still have access to all the modern day apps that I need to. In addition to those two bits of hardware there, the only kind of other differences that you'll notice once you get the PCCM Plus fitted is there's an external microphone rather neatly mounted on my steering column. Um, again, that's nice and discreet. And then in the far corner, so driver side of the dashboard at the base of the A pillar, I've got a tiny little GPS antenna, I suppose that is. But again, discreetly mounted, barely notice it. They're the only kind of, in terms of hardware, visual changes that you will have with your PCCM Plus. So nice and neat from that point of view. Let's turn this on. There we go. So the system is alive straight away. Um, we'll go home first of all. You have got eight options along here they're kind of fairly reminiscent of the six buttons that are down below we go into tuner obviously fm am dab digital radio in the 996 it still blows my mind to this day i've already saved a couple of presets up the top again this to look at in terms of the software is exactly the same as that found in Porsche's 991 Gen 2 generation. That's just the radio. If we go to the PCCM's inbuilt navigation, so there it is. Again, looks very, very similar to that found in the 991. Usability, I find really, really easy to use. It won't be the default navigation that I use, but it's perfectly fine. It has got 3D maps as well. I just haven't got that set. So again, really super simple functionality of that. I really like how that works. That's address navigation. We've spoken about the radio. We'll jump straight into the crux of what this PCCM is all about, shall we? Apple CarPlay. There we go. It blows my mind to think that in a 22-year-old Porsche 911, with all of this modern-day connectivity now at the tip of my finger, you can see just again in terms of basic functionality of the PCCM, super responsive. You know, it's nice and quick as well. This screen is super responsive to your inputs, whether it's uh, pinch, scroll, swipe, all of that, exactly like your smartphone, to be honest. So, Spotify, for example, that's how I listen to my music. Also, crucially, this is what CarPlay is all about for me podcasts. There's here, actually, it's quite neat, these kind of flaps either side almost fold out beyond the circumference of the wheel so you, you know yeah he sounds familiar not sure what he's on about mind <laughs> but and this is something i can actually play without getting into trouble uh, with any copyright infringements podcast is a big thing for me uh, i consume a lot of automotive in particular podcasts i like to listen to them on the go this now gives me the functionality to be able to do that Obviously, the main one for me is Road to Redline. I recommend that as a podcast. Go and listen to it if you have not done so already. I've heard it's rather good. So, podcasts at your fingertips, uh, your own music and playlists on demand. Then you've got maps and navigation. My preferred app for this is Waze. And again, the integration of Waze Let's on take here. Turn that down because it's all about me, not you. It's my channel functionality of it again is absolutely perfect cannot fault it whatsoever excellent right okay so that's kind of a brief rundown in terms of what I like about the PCCM plus just in terms of modern infotainment we've got a choice of apps available at my fingertips my own playlist podcasts navigation maps whatever apps that you have downloaded on your phone and are compatible it is there there is whatsapp as well for messaging but again just in terms of functionality responsiveness of this PCCM plus unit I am so so happy with it we'll get on the road we'll test the phone because I want to establish if the sound quality is clear particularly again the 911 has a lot of rolling tire noise the weight is over the back of the car wider rear tires etc so it's really important that we can have a phone call of crystal clarity we'll test that I'll offer something by way of a conclusion and kind of weigh up pros and cons let's get on the road shall we 
Okay, so I'm on a dual carriageway. Incidentally, my mic isn't able to work at the moment. It usually plugs into my phone. I need the phone in order to do this test. So the audio you're gonna get might not be the best, but it's sort of real world, okay, which is probably a good thing, actually, for sake of this. But as I say, I'm driving on a dual carriageway. I'm currently doing 50 mile an hour. The rolling tire noise is as you would expect from a 911. So we'll put a phone call in, shall we? And, uh, and see how we get on. On Apple CarPlay, please. And then the beauty of Siri is voice commands. Call Laura. Calling Laura K. Sibley, iPhone. This being my wife. My lovely wife, if you're watching, if she ever does. Hi. How clear is my voice on uh, from your end? Uh, it's 10 out of 10, I can hear you really clearly. Yeah, um, so what, like no no worse off than what we'd be if I was say, using the iPhone handset generally? No, it sounds like you're on the handset. I've no issues whatsoever with being able to hear you over the noise uh, of my 911. Incidentally, can you hear this? I can. Laura K. Sibs, that's pretty much it to be honest with you. Thank you for taking part in this and uh, being an absolute thorough and fastidious investigative journalist uh, in the quest. You are more than welcome. <laughs> nice one. All right, I'll see you shortly. I'll be home in a bit. Okay, bye. Bye, 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 bye. So, the phone module works exactly as it should. Nice, super loud, super clear. That's exactly what we want, isn't it? In terms of the nav, say if you're listening to a podcast or the radio, it quiets that noise down and then puts the, um, the directional information over the top of that. Again, nice and seamless, nice and clear. It makes all of this so easy, doesn't it? Well then, that is PCCM Plus review. Lots of positives, as you can tell. I'm a huge, huge fan of this. And for me, the reality is every bit as good as the concept. It really does drag the infotainment side of a Porsche 911, a modern classic now, firmly into the 21st century. And I'm all for that. Connectivity is important to me uh, when I'm out and about. So I am so, so chuffed that I'm able to do this now in my 911. It's my only car. It's the car I use all the time. A couple of observations which I think you probably should be aware of. Number one is, uh, if you are thinking, as is popular in the 996 world to do a lower console delete akin to the GT3 RS for example 996 or the GT3 Club Sport it's kind of difficult to do that because in the PCCM Plus there is no um, platform for the HVAC so you still need that unit I'm afraid in the lower center console so if you're thinking of doing a console delete you kind of can't if you have aspirations of getting PCCM Plus. The other thing as well, it's a small detail, but something that's quite crucial to me. On PCM1, one of the things it did actually do was give me a range, um, albeit it was in kilometers, but it was useful to know. I do like to play petrol light roulette from time to time. So I have not been able to find anything on PCCM Plus so far that is able to give me that information in terms of a precise range. The other thing is, of course, price this is expensive there is no getting away from it it's around about 2200 pounds all in that's for the unit and fitting at a porsche dealership um, currently book time at a porsche dealership is 3.2 hours prices do vary slightly it'll probably mainly come down to the labor rate of your porsche dealership so have a chat with them there are aftermarket companies that offer a far cheaper solution but from what i've seen there are a couple of problems with that. The first one is the fit is never really as good. As I keep saying, this to me looks like it was at home within the dashboard from day one, the day this car rolled out of work to factory at Zuffenhausen. For whatever reason, aftermarket versions, they just don't fit as well. And also they don't look at home. A lot of them ditch buttons entirely. It's just at odds with the aesthetics and the 996's interior, so it just doesn't look good. When I see an aftermarket head unit fitted in a Porsche 996, it does always worry me as to kind of the uh, state of play with the wiring at the back of it. We've all seen Bosch jobs out there, haven't we? And to my mind, unless you give it to somebody who absolutely knows what they're doing, that could be more rife. At least if you've taken this to a Porsche dealership, you know that the wiring and the workmanship that has gone into fitting this unit is gonna be absolutely tip top. I do actually think having PCCM Plus adds value to a Porsche 996. I really do. It gives you everything you need in terms of that modern connectivity, but it is ultimately official Porsche. And we all know what official Porsche that stamp does for the value of your car. 
whether it's uh, genuine parts on chassis or whatever, um, I don't think it's any different with the infotainment system. I do therefore believe that while it is quite a considerable outlay financially, it is going to pay dividends in terms of being a little bit of an investment on your 996. That is about it. If you have any questions on this, pop them in the comments below and I will endeavour to get back to you. As for me, well, as I said, I am so, so chuffed to have modern infotainment and connectivity in my 22-year-old 911. As I say, the concept still blows me away. Instantly, I've already had on Instagram a lot of 997 owners asking me when this technology is likely to be available for them. The technology and software is all there. It is therefore all about that fascia and making it fit the 997 dashboard. I am absolutely certain that you 997 owners will have something like this before long because it is a must have for your 911 if, like me, you use it every day. That is about it. Thank you very much for watching. I'm gonna get out of this car now because I had to turn the aircon off so you can hear me. And it's getting very sweaty. As I say, any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you soon. Thank you.